welcome to a new screencast for our robots unit. Um, we're going to be looking at, in this uh, podcast, how to make the components to make your uh, robot. Um, you can see on the screen here, I'm looking at an original, oh, this was like way back in my childhood, Tinker Toys, thinking about how you can use the same basic structures um, to make different things. Tinker Toys, back way back in the days. It came with a little chart here that shows you how you could make some things. I never looked at the chart. I just made up stuff as I went along. Probably um, you can do um, some really intricate things. This was a moving uh, Ferris wheel, um, so the things could actually move after you made them. But probably for more from your heart is Legos, more of your generation. But once again, it's basic component parts that you use to make different things. You move the parts around, you get a different kind of structure. I mean, who wouldn't want a Lego car? Because I was going to spend this much time on it. I think I'd make something a little bit more exciting than an SUV, right? Sports car, right? So this is what we're going to do. These are going to be our basic components for making the robot. A sphere, a cube, a cone, and a cylinder. If you can make these and make them look 3D, you can actually make anything because they're the basic building parts for a lot of the things that you see in man-made structures. Okay? Look around your day today and see how many times you see a cylinder, a cube, a sphere, or a cone somewhere in the room that you're sitting in or the structure you're walking in. So let's get started. Now, you notice there's a strange thing up here in the corner. This is my color scheme. If you're working on that group project where things need to look like your robots belong together, you might want to get with your group and decide on a color scheme. And it's really easy to do. You just go out to the web and do a search for color scheme generator. Um, this is the one I like to use because it's really simple and gives me a lot of options. Right now, this is the current color scheme I have selected. But if I click on hues, I get this color wheel, this black dot lets me choose the main color of the color scheme. These are different types. This is a triad up here. And if I move these along, it's going to change the colors. I can find the ones that I want to use. Here's an analogous, three colors that are similar. You can spread these out and widen the color scheme. But once you get the one that you want, if you click on color list, here are some basic ones. It's a little bit more um, complex than this. You can actually have a wider range than the colors that you see here, but just to get you started. And how do I get this into Photoshop? Well, on my keyboard, I do Command, Shift, 4, and you'll see that the cursor changes into crosshairs. I just drag it over what I want. You should hear a click. And that's like a little camera going off. And over in my um, desktop, the color scheme will appear. Here it is. And all I have to do is drag its layer into my picture. And there's that color scheme ready for me to use. Okay. Now I want you to notice while I'm talking about layers is that I have every one of these objects on a separate layer. So I want to hide them just to make sure you understand. And the reason why I want to do this is because later on it allows me to duplicate them. I only have to make them once and then I can duplicate or copy the layers and use them over and over again. But let's go over how to make these. The easiest one of course is to do the sphere. So if you take your circle marquee tool and drag, now remember you can make it any kind of oval you want, but if you hold down the shift key, it doesn't matter what you do with your cursor, it's always going to be a perfect circle. And I like this little technique. If you hold down the option key and the shift key together, you can draw, grow it out from the middle of the circle. I don't think I get a little bit more control on getting it the size I want that way. Whoop! A little technical problem there, okay. Now, I've set up a gradient over here. You can't see my color picker uh, up at the top on the option bar, but here it is. And how do I set this up for the sphere? I make sure that I'm on, not black, because I want to use black later on for some details. I never use black on my gradients. I try not to. And I've set that up here. You choose the color. Look how low that is on the gray. And, of course, over here, though, I want to come over here and click on my color um, swatches from the internet to set this up. You just click. And you have this window is open, you click on the house, you come over to your swatches and you click on the color that you want. 
So once again, I'm not going to start off with a really bright yellow because I want to be able to control where I put my highlights. And if I take my gradient, make it the circle one, the one that does this, I can move the highlight around on my sphere. Now, you'll notice that it doesn't have a highlight, and it's missing a little brightness here. Light reflects on a sphere. So I'm going to take my uh, dodge tool. Actually, no, I want to use the paintbrush with some white. So I'm going to put a bright highlight here. I like to paint them on instead of use the dodge tool to get a, that highlight a little bit quicker. And then I know that light's going to bounce off of the surface, so I want to get that. That's a little bit too bright. Let me lower my flow. My, is that my flow? The opacity. And make that a little bit bigger. Put in that little bit of highlight there. So that one's done. And because I'm on a new layer, I can move this around. Whoop. I cut some off here. Let me clean this up a little bit. Actually, let me go back. Move tool. I want to do Command X. It's really not on a separate layer, is it? And Command V put it on its own layer. So if you forget to do that, select it, move it around. So there is my sphere. And I'm going to clean this up. Remember, on a separate layer, you can always do that. Now I want to go to my top layer and add a new one. So I can do that cube. Now the cube's a little bit hard to do. I can click them off with the polygon tool. But some people like to do this. I'm going up to the view menu and choosing show the grid so I can have some lines to follow. If I take my polygon tool, I can follow the corners here. This one I'm not going to put, I should, most people put right there. I'm going to go over here and not as wide as the back because as things go back in space they appear to get smaller. Take my eyedropper, just do eye on the keyboard, find that green right there and do option delete it in. Take my polygon tool and I'm following the edge of this one. Now remember as things go back they get smaller so I'm not going to have these line up. It has to look like the front side is narrower or wider than the back side. So it's getting smaller as it goes back. Take my eyedropper, find that color there, pop it in by doing option delete or you could use the paint bucket. And I only have one more side to do with my cube. I'm coming down and remember, I'm trying to make the back look smaller than the front. Okay, take my eyedropper again, find that darker shade of that color, and do option, whoop, option delete. And my cube basic structure is there. Now I'm going to turn off the um, grid, go back to show, and re-choose it again. It turns it off so that I can take my dodge tool and put on some highlights. Um, I'm going to make that brush a little bit bigger, lighten it up, Oop. lighten it up. I'm not going to change the top really because that's where the light's needed on a flat surface. It wouldn't have much of a change unless it was a bigger, wider area. Do my burn, because as it moves away from the light it's going to get darker. I'm going to do some burn on this side too. You might want to select the sides separate. Okay, and then always I'm going to put in some reflective light. Here's my brush tool. Put in some reflective light. Maybe there might be a little highlight right there. Very closer it is to the light source. A little light. Whoop, wrong place. I want to have that down here so it looks like it's coming off the light. A little highlight right in there. Makes it look a little bit more 3D. Now remember, once again, you can take and resize this. You can rotate them, okay? But follow your light source. I mean, maybe because of the sphere, I want to have a light somewhere on that side, okay? Now I'm going to add another layer and do the comb, apply. And on this one, once again, I'm going to go back and do that show the grid so that I can set this up. I'm going to start this out with an oval. I'm going to do the base first. There's the base of my cone. Pick up the polygon tool and hold down. you got to hold down the shift key to add on. See that little plus sign next to the tool? And I'm going to go up and I'm going to use this to 
create the top of the cone. Got to come back to the beginning. It's a little cocky wobble, but that's okay. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. Come over and pick up my gradient tool. I'm going to change the color. Once again, you click on the house, go over to your um, swatches and just click because it turns into the eyedropper. Say OK. I'm going to not use the round, I'm going to use the linear gradient and pull that across. And it already looks like it's round, like a cylinder. It's a little conky wobble, like I said, so I'm going to go over here to edit and choose transform skew. Now you might not be able to see that on my screen. Didn't make it wide enough. That allows you just to move that top one side of your selection. Say OK to that. And let's put on those highlights. Once again, I'm using the brush tool. I'm going to make it big. And paint that highlight. Make it look like there's a light shining on it. All right. Make the brush a little bit smaller and do that reflected light on the other side. That's looking pretty good. Hide down my grid. Hide the grid by selecting it again and moving this over. So I have room to paint my cylinder. And once again, I'm going to add a new layer. Apply. And this time, oh, excuse me, I'm going to pick up the rectangle tool. I think I'm just going to leave the color the same. You know how to change them. Here's my rectangle. Pick up my gradient. I'm going to pull that across. So you can see it starts to look like um, just a flat. It doesn't look round yet until I add the tops and the bottom. So watch this little trick here. I want to take and hold down my shift key. I want to do this all at the same time, the color all at the same time. Don't try to do this like do the rectangle and then do the oval and fill it with the gradient. Do it all at one time so that when you do it, you don't get a weird kind of line where the curves overlap. There you go. Now the bottom looks right, but the top doesn't. So I'm going to deselect, take my oval to look where I'm placing that cursor, right on the side and pulling up until the outside edges of the oval touch the rectangle. And this time with my gradient, if I go in the same direction, it doesn't look like it's open. If I go in the opposite direction with my gradient, it opens it up so I can have things roll in, flatten, uh, roll through the tube. It becomes a unit that I can use in different ways. Okay. Once again, I'm just going to lower this down, make it any size, I can rotate it, oh yeah. So that could become a finger, a leg, a thigh, um, yeah, I'm starting to think about how I can use these. Now this was a pretty long tutorial, so remember, anytime during the tutorial you want to paint along with me, you can pause it by hitting the space bar on your keyboard. So have fun making those basic forms, and our next task is to use them to make some robots. We'll take it to the next step. We're going to warp them. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye.